little four-year-old girl loved Sunday school. She loved coming to church. She had her little children's Bible, the living Bible for children, and she came every week with her little Bible, and she went to Sunday school where she was learning about Moses and the Exodus and the wandering in the wilderness, and she was just eating it up. And then one Sunday, it was time to go to Sunday school, and she told her mom, no, I'm not going. I'm going to stay here with you. And her mom looked at her, uh-oh, what happened? Did something happen in Sunday school? No. Moses died, and it's just not the same anymore. <laughs> you know, that's the human condition. We experience change as loss. Any kind of change could be good change, but it doesn't matter. It isn't what it used to be, and that's our experience as human beings. If you want to follow along this morning, we're going to look together at the Old Testament passage, uh, the death of Moses. Uh, and that's Deuteronomy chapter 34. If you've got a pew Bible nearby, if you didn't bring one, either underneath of you or in the pew in front of you, uh, you'll find that on page 177. Memorial Day in our family was a big deal. Um, I'm the fifth generation to be born in the District of Columbia in D.C. Um, and so when Memorial Day would come around, uh, we would go and put the lawnmower in the back of our station wagon and um, my mom would go around her garden and cut all of the flowers, my dad's flowers, and put them in vases and things and containers and fill up the back seat on the floor with all of those. We're not allowed to put our feet on the floor in the back seat because we have to ride in the car. No seat belts so we could turn sideways. It's all fine. And then we would do this procession. It would be my mother and my aunts and my great aunts. And we would make a round of all the cemeteries. We have relatives buried at Congressional Cemetery. We have relatives buried at Rock Creek Cemetery. And we would go around. And despite its name, Congressional, Congress hasn't given any money for its upkeep. And it's just a weed patch. And so we'd go to Congressional. And we'd get the lawnmower out, and we'd cut the plot, and we'd edge the plot, and we'd pull the weeds, and we'd lay the flowers out. And then we'd go on to another cemetery. Well, some of the relatives, my Uncle Bob, who was a veteran of the Second World War, my great-grandfather, uh, Big John Covington, was a captain in the D.C. Fire Department. And um, we used to do this every Memorial Day, like clockwork. And then in 1970, my grandmother died, and that was the end of that. I was 10 years old, and we never, we never did it after that. And to this day, I know that some are buried in these various cemeteries, but I couldn't begin to tell you where their grave is. I was 10 years old when we stopped doing it. I don't know. I know some of the stories. I know the names. I remember some of the things that they did and what they were known for in our family. That is Deuteronomy chapter 34. Here is God's man, Moses, and God is one who is a, a promise keeper. The Old Testament word, steadfast love, loving kindness, chesed is the Hebrew word. Covenant keeping, promise keeping God. If you look with me here at verse um, 4. And the Lord said to Moses, This is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to your offspring. And so God is a God who keeps his promise. Now, he made a promise about the land and the offspring. He did not make a promise to Moses. In fact, it was a punishment. Moses himself would not enter the promised land. And so he begins this passage, or Joshua does, in verse 1, Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo. He made his goodbyes, he said his farewells, and then he went in the presence of the Lord to Mount Nebo, and he looked at the promised land. His heart burned to go with his people to the promised land. Do we burn with that same desire, that same heart? And when I say the promised land, I don't mean go away to heaven, leave this world behind and go up to heaven and get our wings and fly. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about what we just prayed together. Did I pray it? Yes. Um, thy kingdom come, thy will be done here as it is in heaven. Moses' whole ministry, his whole life was about bringing this people under the headship of God, where his kingdom would display the glory and the majesty of Yahweh, the God of the Israelites. And here is the land that I promised them, and that land, as America was promised to be, was going to be a city on a hill, 
a light to the nations, to call people to Yahweh, the God of Israel. If you read further along in the story, you know it didn't work out quite that way. But here is Moses being reminded by God, I've kept my promises. And then Moses dies, and Israel doesn't know where he is. There's no monument, there's no headstone, there's no guided tour, there's no place to put flowers, there's nothing left. This is the story of Moses, and this is a reminder to us that the gravesite itself isn't as important as it is to remember the people who've gone ahead of us. Memorial Day began kind of in fits and starts. In May 5th, May 5th, 1866, in the town of Waterloo, New York, the town fathers decided that it would be appropriate for them to gather up flowers and place them on the graves of the departed Civil War soldiers um, in that town. And so Congress recognizes Waterloo, New York as the birthplace of the holiday Memorial Day. Then, two years later, in 1868, General John A. Lucas declared as the President of the Army of the Republic that we're going to set aside May 30th in perpetuity as a day to remember, and I know I'm in the South, don't get mad at me, these were his words, to remember the fallen from the late rebellion which we put down. Um, so May 30th, um, 1868. After World War I, it was set aside as a national holiday on May 30th until 1971 and the government workers have a good union and they said no we want a three-day weekend so it now falls on the last Monday of the month since 1971 and it's a day for us to remember it's a day to remember not just soldiers who've given their lives that's what it was intended for originally but it was broadened um, after World War I to include all of those people who've had an impact on your life, who have taught you and encouraged you and um, shown you, be given an example of a manner of life for you to follow and for you to emulate. And this day is set aside not for a day off and not for picnics and barbecues. It's a day for us to remember those who've gone before us. I'm hoping tomorrow, it's Memorial Day, it's a day that we, out of patriotic duty, ought to set aside time to remember people. My father died last year. I'm going to take some time, and I'm going to remember my father. I'm going to mourn my loss. I'm going to remember the things that he taught me, and I'm going to be thankful to God that my father was a man in Christ. Memorial Day. Um, there are three things that we need to do when it comes to Memorial Day. The first is, as I just mentioned, we need to mourn our loss. We don't know what we have until it's gone. We don't know what we have until it's taken away from us. It's when we experience loss that the if onlys start. If only I had told her I love her one more time. If only he was here for me to give a, a hug to just one more time. If only I hadn't spoken so harshly to him the last time I saw him. And we live with these regrets and, and we beat ourselves up because we took them for granted when they were with us. You know, that's the children of Israel. Let's look at the last three verses of our text this morning. The psalmist says, Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of one of his saints. That's Moses. The death of one of his saints. And while he was with them, they were cantankerous and murmuring and grumbling and rebellious and hard-headed and stubborn and refused to do the things that he commanded them to do, had to get a whole new set of Ten Commandments because when he came down from the mountain, there they are with their golden calf. Um, this, these are the people, and yet here is their memory, the loss of Moses that they're going to take with them. Verse 10, And there has not arisen a prophet since in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, None like him for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all his servants, to all his land. For all the mighty power and the, all the great deeds of terror that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. Now that he's gone, oh my goodness, what did we have? And why didn't we cherish him? And why didn't we encourage him? And why didn't we obey him? And why didn't the if-onlys begin to weigh us down? This is a testimony 
to Moses' faithfulness. This is also a testimony for the way in which they remember him. It says that they mourned. Where is it? Verse 8. And the people of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab for 30 days. They had no place to go. They don't know where God buried him. More important than where he's buried is bury him in their hearts and remember him as the prophet of one who did mighty deeds and miracles and the one who led them faithfully and gave himself for them. So the first thing that we do when we consider Memorial Day is that we mourn our loss. We mourn those who have gone before us. Secondly, we remember, and we remember their lives. I served a church that's older than America. Uh, it was founded in 1763 and had a big cemetery out back in central Pennsylvania. And uh, if I had free time, I'd like to wander in the cemetery and read the monuments and read the gravestones, the headstones, some of which were virtually impossible to read because they were over 200 years old and they were well weathered. And um, there, there were lines like, gone so soon, four-year-old little girl. Infant mortality at the end of the 18th and the beginning of the 19th century was sky high. Kids got sick and they got a fever and they were carried off uh, to be with Jesus. And so there were lots of these headstones. They were little, little headstones for the children of these families who had passed away in childhood or in infancy. There was one uh, that said, um, gone but not forgotten, a man to his wife. She passed away in childbirth, um, giving birth to, a, I mean, there's a whole list of names of the children, um, and there were four or five kids. She's still in her 20s, and she passed away in the midst of childbirth, gone but not forgotten. These epitaphs, they remind us of the people who are buried beneath the earth there. We don't know them. I mean, this is 200 years later. I don't know them. I don't know their families. But it's a reminder, a testimony to them. The author of this last chapter, um, tradition says Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible, but I don't think he wrote down about his own death. Although there's a Jewish tradition that he wrote chapter 34 and talked about his own death as tears were streaming down his face, he was writing this. That's a Jewish tradition. Tradition says Joshua wrote this chapter. But here is his epitaph, the final words that Joshua attributes to Moses um, verse 5, so Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. Two things that Joshua wanted to highlight about Moses. First, that he was God's servant. He was God's man. He didn't go out and seek position. He didn't go out and seek power. He didn't go out and seek authority. God came to him and met him and called him. And Moses, God bless him, to the best of his ability, followed this leading of God. He was God's servant, again, to a people that were hard to manage, to a people who didn't value or honor his leadership. He was a servant. It wasn't about power and position. He was a servant, a servant of God and a servant of God's people that God told him to go and care for his people. The second thing about him is according to the word of the Lord. No one in scripture is more aligned with, no one is more thought of in terms of the scriptures than Moses. The Jewish people call their Bible the Tanakh, and the first word is T, Torah, the law. The first five books of Moses, that's what they're called, the first five books in our Bibles, the Pentateuch, is the law or the books of Moses. And he is the one who was the lawgiver. He was the mediator. He got the laws from God and brought them down to the people. And so they're remembering this ministry. Joshua, on this epitaph, is remembering, first, his servant's heart, and secondly, that he was conformed to the word of God. He was its teacher. He was its proclaimer. He, it, he was its model for the people. And again, so we look at the end of what Joshua writes. There was, verse 10... Not arisen a prophet since like Moses. He's the greatest of the Old Testament prophets. Actually, he's the greatest of the Old Testament saints in terms of the variety of his ministries. He was their prophet. He was their priest. He was their king or ruler. 
and he was also their judge. He was a prefiguring of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our prophet, our priest, our king, and our judge. Moses was given those responsibilities, and in Deuteronomy chapter 18, God promised, I will raise up from among your people a prophet who will be like Moses. And they looked and looked and waited and waited for this one who would come, our Lord Jesus Christ, who was what? A servant. He came not to be served, but to serve and to lay down his life as a ransom, as Moses did for the children of Israel. So our Lord Jesus Christ does for us and for all who will obey his word. Our gospel lesson, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. How do we know if we love Jesus? We do what he tells us to do. Moses did what Yahweh, the God of Israel, told him to do. What was true of Moses, Jesus was a servant and he was also the word of God. In his person, he was the Logos, the divine second person of the Trinity, but he himself was God's word. So we remember on Memorial Day, we mourn the passing of those that are meaningful to us, who love us, who've laid down their lives, that we might enjoy the freedoms that we have. We're gathered here this morning with the freedom of assembly, guaranteed by the blood shed by our patriots in order that we might enjoy these rights that are in the Bill of Rights. We're gathered this morning. I'm holding a Bible in my hand, and we have the freedom to gather. We also have the freedom to worship. And you might get your Constitution out and read it. We have several other rights that are enumerated in the Constitution. We mourn our loss. We remember the life, the example, the manner of the life of the person who has passed away, who has gone to his reward. Another one of those epitaphs that I read in my cemetery, safe in the arms of Jesus. Life early in the 1800s was very difficult for these poor German immigrants. They were indentured servants. They got here. That's how they paid their way to get here. They indentured themselves to families for up to seven years. And they were very, very poor. And life was very, very hard. And this husband for his wife, he is now safe. She is now safe in the arms of Jesus. We mourn our loss. We remember their life and example. And we give thanks to God for them and what they have done for us. Those last verses again. There is none like him for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh, to his servants, to the land, and for all the mighty power and all the great deeds. This man whom the Lord knew face to face. In the Greek, it's prosopon a prosopon, face to face. He enjoyed an intimacy with God that was the awe and the inspiration of the people. They were afraid, awe. He'd come down off the mountain being with God, the Shekinah glory enveloped him. He glowed, wasn't radioactive, but it was the glory of God that was evident in his person, having been intimate with God and spent time with God. And then he was a wonder worker and a miracle worker. And in this final passage in this final chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. It's an opportunity for Israel to understand this is what we've lost. This was our leader. And to honor him and to thank God that he'd given them a leader like Moses. On this Memorial Day, let's take time in the midst of our day off to mourn our losses, to remember those who laid down their lives for us, who set us a good example, who modeled for us what it means to be a human being and a Christian. And let's give thanks to God on Memorial Day. Amen.